Gravedigger's Adam Anderson had the deck stacked against him last episode, but will tonight be his resurrection? Bryce Kenny has been in the hunt all season long, but is yet to claim his first overall event championship of 2020. Can he drive the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior to the coveted event trophy tonight? And Todd the Duke never makes it easy for anyone. Monster Energy is on a roll, coming off a win, and is looking for back-to-back -back event titles. We're back with Stadium Championship Series Red as the battle for the Alamo continues tonight. This is Monster Jam. Welcome to the historic Alamo Dome in San Antonio, Texas. Tonight's home for Stadium Championship Series Red. I'm Scott Jordan alongside Zombies Vari Musauer with Taylor Mock and Laura Callis on the ground. And tonight our drivers will battle it out in three competitions. Monster Energy Racing, the Great Clip Skills Challenge, and Freestyle. The winner of each event will be awarded a total of 14 points. And the top point earner will be named tonight's overall event champion. Now, Bari, as we look at tonight's driver's lineup, who are your top three in this Stadium Championship Series red field to watch? Gosh, Scott, as I said before, this is such a stacked lineup, but you always have to count in Adam Anderson, of course, Todd LaDuke, Bryce Kenny, he's really hungry for a win. There's so much talent in this lineup, though. It's anybody's game. Bari, as we've seen this season, each of our three Stadium Championship Series have a unique track. Now take us through a few highlights of what the Series Red Track offers drivers and fans alike. Yes, Scott, the Stadium Championship Series Red Track has probably the most familiar racing course in all of Monster Jam. From the starting line, the drivers will hit that ramp and set up for that J-hook turn. Now this is really going to where it's going to make or break the race because the last episode out here in San Antonio, that turn was really slick. A lot of trucks were washing out, so hopefully these drivers have, you know, made the adjustment to be able to not make any mistakes and charge towards that finish line for the win. And as you know, every driver is a bit different on their lane choice preference, and that, of course, changes each week depending on the venue and the makeup of the Monster Dirt Track. But let's go and take a look at tonight's racing bracket as we preview Monster Energy Racing. Bari, as you take a look at the bracket, what two matchups stand out the most to you? Ooh, Dragon and Overboard. That looks like it's going to be a great matchup. Two veteran drivers, anybody's game there. Great Clips Mohawk Warrior and Black Pearl have automatically advanced into round two as they had the fastest first race passes from last episode here in San Antonio. So Bryce Kenny with a big racing win last time in San Antonio. Can he come back and do it again? He's got to get through a stacked field in Stadium Championship Series Red. This is our first round one matchup, Bari. Lucas Oil Crusader against Monster Mutt Rottweiler. And this is going to set the tone, Scott, because anytime you can see which lane does what, that's how you know which lane you might want to be in for the duration of the actual racing bracket. And that left lane offering all kinds of trouble for Brad Allen and Monster Mutt Rottweiler and Lucas Oil Crusader is just going to cruise across the finish line into a victory. What happened in that left lane to cause Brad Allen so much trouble? Well, it looked like he just pushed way out there to the you know boundaries of the track and you know at that point his race was done. Here's Tyler Duke and Monster Energy against Jim Kohler and Avenger. Monster Energy with a slight advantage. Look at the tight turn. Kohler goes a little sideways and a little long. And Monster Energy taking advantage. The final turn, if he can nail it, he's on his way to round two. Here comes Monster Energy. Tyler Duke set up that first turn perfectly. He really started with the rear steer really early to get the truck to rotate around that turn because the sand is making these trucks push out a lot. John Zimmer and Dragon, Jamie Gardner and Overboard. This is the matchup you talked about. They're going to come off the line here, Overboard. And Jamie Gardner been on a racing tear so far in 2020. Can he dominate this matchup and advance to round two? He's on it so far. What a great first part of the race for Jamie Garner. All he's got to do is finish out strong, but they're pushing through this last corner. It's anybody's game. And look how slow they come around that turn and overboard makes the adjustment quicker than Dragon and Jamie Garner continues that streak and he is moving on to racing round two. Yeah, Jamie's got a lot of momentum. The fans love it so far in round one. 
And here's where we stand after the first half of round one. This is the Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior side of the bracket. Lucas Oil Crusader, Monster Energy, and Overboard advancing to round two. Now Colvinard will sit and watch his side of the bracket unfold. Here is Black Stallion against Hooked. Now, I'm interested to see how these two get around this track because they have open front ends, which means they don't run a locker, so their truck should rotate a lot better. See how tight Black Stallion was around that first turn? It's because it, it's got an open front end in the front of the truck. The final turn will decide the race. Left lane, right lane. We've seen them both pan out. They are dead even across the finish line. Oh, man. And a close. tough finish. It looked like Hook may have had the advantage. And he, in fact, is moving on to round two. Look at the close finish here in round one of racing. That's exactly why I love seeing Monster Jam live for moments like that where you get a photo finish. Steve Simpson, Stone Crusher, had everything going his way last episode oh. in San Antonio. Not tonight, though. The sleep at the light. What a jump off the line for Becky McDonough and El Toro Loco. Can she keep it going? She getting around that J hook. She's slowing down, though. Steve Sims catching up a little bit. I think Becky learned from watching these previous round matchups that you want to go slow around that last turn. She got a gift there. Sideways across the finish line, doesn't matter. El Toro Loco advancing to round two. As we mentioned earlier, Grave Digger and Adam Anderson faced several challenges in our last episode here at the Alamo Dome. Mari, help break down what happened in this UNOH pit report. Yeah, Adam's problem started from the very first green light of racing. You know, after winning his round bout against Stone Crusher, Grave Digger suffered a setback and his team had to replace the truck's third member. As a result, Gravedigger would not be able to return for the rest of the racing competition. It's truly a team effort in Monster Jam. Something you don't see very often in other motorsports is crew chiefs and mechanics from other teams doing their part to level the playing field and working together. And that's exactly what happened to allow Monster Jam's Adam Anderson to climb back into Gravedigger for the Great Clip Skills Challenge. And as you can see right here, he does an awesome slap wheelie, but then he gets in trouble. He catches the edge of that pod and he breaks the spindle off right there. So once again, the crew chiefs, they go back in the pits and they fix it because you know they want to see Adam Anderson and Gravedigger back out there for freestyle. And as hard as everyone worked, and despite the challenges, Gravedigger did finish third in freestyle. But anytime Adam Anderson doesn't win, it's a disappointment to both he and the fans. So we'll see if tonight can have a happier ending for Adam Anderson and Team Gravedigger. And he lines up in round one against Mike Vodders, a second in Overkill Evolution. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see how these two take this first turn, Scott. Adam Anderson around the J hook in the left lane. Mike Vodders, a second in the right. Gravedigger slowing down a little bit. Overkill Evolution has caught up the final turn, clipping the tire. And Gravedigger still manages to get around as Overkill Evolution spins out. And Gravedigger getting some round one redemption here. Look at that time, lightning fast. Adam Anderson moving on to round two. Yeah, the way Mike spun out in that last turn, I think he might have some issues. We're now moving on to round two of Monster Energy Racing, Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior and the Black Pearl now in the bracket. What are you looking for in this second round of racing? I'm looking for that one driver that can consistently attack this track, you know, not make mistakes. This is the Elite Eight, so it's anybody's game. A lot of great talent here in this bracket. Bryce Kenny, Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior, coming off his first stadium racing win of his career. Last episode in San Antonio gets a matchup now with Lindsey Wink and Lucas Oil Crusader. They're even off the line. Lucas Oil now off the whole shot with an advantage into the J-hook they go. Lucas Oil Crusader taking advantage of that left lane. Yeah, Bryce made up that time, though. He had a little burp off that starting line, so it'd be interesting. Oh, Lindsey goes way wide. This is really shaping up to be a driver's track, and Bryce Kenny cool as the other side of the pillow on that one. Continuing his winning streak in San Antonio, it's Bryce Kenny defeating Lindsey Wink by nearly a full second. Moving on to our second round two matchup. Here comes Monster Energy against Overboard. Yeah, and I want to see if Todd sets the truck. Yeah, he's doing it there. See how fast he sets that truck into that turn. It's so he can get a good exit off the turn it, just to do it again in this last turn. And a perfect example of what Todd does. He just whips that truck around. But look at Overboard taking advantage. Todd wow. the Duke with that last second push. We are going to have to take another look at this one. It looked like Overboard had him, but Monster Energy with that last second throttle push getting right there to the finish line. Monster Energy pulls it off a come from behind wow, win awesome. for Todd LaDuke. That's a great race, Scott. I mean, look at the fans. I would be cheering too, man. This is amazing seeing these photo finishes.
Closest race of the night. Now we get our first look tonight of Covenard in the Black Pearl up against Brian Wright in Hooked. The start so crucial here. We know they slowing down in the turns after you get that hole shot has been a factor. But so far it is the Black Pearl getting the hole shot and taking the jump. Yeah, but as you can see, Covenard pushed way out in that first turn, whereas Brian Wright is really tight around that first turn. I think this is shaping up to be a great photo finish again, though, Scott. Even as they come across the race ramp and the final finish, it had to do with the way the trucks lined up. Hooked kept it lined perfectly straight. The Black Pearl went sideways, and in the end, Hooked edges out. Covenard in the Black Pearl, our final round two matchup. Adam Anderson and Gravedigger, Becky McDonough, El Toro Loco. Yeah, it's going to be interesting, Scott, to see how these two take this first turn. As you can see, Becky's really kind of calculated. Adam Anderson is hammered down, drifting over there, though. It's going to once again come down to the final turn as they hit into that final J-hook. Becky McDonough getting sideways, but it's the air for Gravedigger that will ultimately cost him the matchup. And Becky McDonough and El Toro Loco, she is advancing to our semi-final round. That air, that final jump off the race ramp, Ari, that was the difference. Yeah, it's quite interesting to see how two different approaches yield two different results. Becky came away with the edge on that one. And then there were four as we take a look at the racing semifinals. Gray Clips Mohawk Warrior meets Monster Energy and Hooked meets El Toro Loco. Who are the two you expect to take on to the finals? Man, Bryce Kenny's looked smooth all night, and he's actually forced Todd LaDuke over into the left lane. I don't think Todd's been there all night, so I think he's got an advantage here. We'll see. Bryce Kenny and Great Clips Mohawk Warrior is undefeated in 2020 on this San Antonio track. Getting a slight advantage off the jump. Here they go around the J-hook as Great Clips Mohawk Warrior now slowing down a little bit. It's Monster Energy trying to catch up. The final turn for Great Clips Mohawk Warrior goes wide as Monster Energy cuts it short. And that is the difference. Todd the Duke with the fastest time of the night, Barry. Tyler Duke has been setting up these turns precisely. He knows he's in control of that Monster Energy, Monster Jam truck, and he's prevailing to the victory there. Now we find out who will meet Monster Energy in the finals. El Toro Loco against Hook. Becky McDonough has to be a heavy favorite in this match, but in the first turn, she has some catching up to do. Yeah, she's real slow and calculated in these turns, which is not a bad thing. As you can see, she's still in the race. She's still nice and tight. Look at it. She's a trek length of head. Hook just drifts too wide, and that is ultimately the difference as Becky McDonough and El Toro Loco moves on to the final round against Todd LaDuke and Monster Energy, two superstars in this sport, Bari, who is going to walk away with the first 14 points of the night. Man, it's such a tough matchup. Becky, is, um, it's great to see her in the final round. Todd LaDuke, though, he's cool, calm, and collected. It's anybody's game, man. They're now pulling to the starting line. It is our finals in Monster Energy Racing. Todd LaDuke in Monster Energy. Becky McDonough in El Toro Loco. Todd LaDuke now back in the right lane where he is so comfortable. They are now off the line, off the race ramp, and into the first turn. And did you see Todd LaDuke had that truck rotated basically on the apex of the turn. So really, he's charging all the way to the finish line. Well, oh, Becky's in trouble, though. El Toro Loco gets stuck on that turn, and Todd the Duke in Monster Energy bouncing back after last episode gets a big racing win. The time, 19.393, 14 points, heading the way of Todd the Duke in Monster Energy. And here are your racing point standings, Bari. Yeah, Todd LaDuke was driving that truck with a lot of confidence. And this is a very tricky track. There's sand, and then there's dirt, and there's clay. So it's really testament to the job that Todd LaDuke did behind the wheel. Let's go to Taylor Mock with our Monster Energy Racing winner. How you feeling, birthday boy? Unbelievable. No, I just, I got thrown in both lanes, and I th always thought this lane was the worst one. And to get two wins out of that, ro that lane was incredible. And he was always just in my ear going, you got this, dude. Don't even doubt yourself get it and uh it was weird because the track was fast on one side and then the opposite on the other so what a great way to keep marching forward with this championship Woo! big win for todd LaDuke as his texas hot streak continues great clip skills challenge criteria each driver gets the option of two attempts at a two-wheel skill stunt or a donut you're looking for creativity and wow factor and it's time to take a look at who gave the fans the best two-wheel maneuvers or donut as we take a look at the top five drivers who dominated the great clip skills challenge tonight Great sky wheelie there from Adam Anderson. That's an old school move and a new school competition. Let's see what Bryce has got here. And Bryce has struggled a little bit in this competition throughout his career, but he's got it on point. The nose wheelie into the moonwalk, up across that ramp, and then back down again. Look at the bounce in the tires. What a run for Bryce Kenny and the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. 
Yeah, I know he's worked long and hard at perfecting that. He's on his way. Kovenard getting a stoppy, but then skidding it across the track a little bit. There's the precision, gets it perfect balance, and just back and forth here. The throttle control, unbelievable for Kovenard in the Black Pearl. He would finish in third. It came down to our racing winner, Todd LaDuke and Monster Energy, or Overkill Evolution, and Todd LaDuke doing what Todd LaDuke does best. Yeah, doing these nose wheelies, it takes so much composure, you know, because we're used to having our heart rate up, our adrenaline pumping when it comes to driving these Monster Jam trucks. To be able to control a truck like that for that long is very special. It was Mike Vodders the second in Overkill Evolution with this extended nose wheelie and Moonwalk who took the Great Clip Skills Challenge Championship sweeping the event here at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio. A back-to-back -back Skills Championship here in San Antonio for you. I mean, wow, what's going through your mind? It definitely feels good to get a second win in the two-wheel skill. I, you know, I've been practicing these all summer long. The rollover wasn't part of it. It just got a little far over on me. I've been trying to crab walk it, turn the wheels, and the front just grabbed a little bit, and it uh, caused me to go over on my lid. I'm having so many issues with the truck right now. We have an extremely bad oil leak coming from the front of the engine, throwing oil everywhere. I can't steer because it gets on my belt, and it sticks the steering. I just want to get out here and do the best freestyle I can, guys. We're trying to make it work. San Antonio, we always love coming here. These fans down here are definitely some of the loudest and the best, so make some noise, guys. Overkill Evolution takes the win and the 14 points, but Monster Energy, Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior, and Grave Digger all finishing strong in this competition as the battle for the overall event championship is heating up now with one competition left. So after taking those points, we'll add them to the racing point standings. And here's how we stand overall so far. Bari, Todd LaDuke, a four-point lead over Bryce Kenny's Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior. I can't help but think that Bryce really wants redemption from last week's episode. He was so close to an overall event championship, and he still got Tyler Duke, that thorn sticking in his side, just wanting to get over the hump to beat him. It's time now for some freestyle action. Let's take a look at how the event is scored. Each of our drivers will attempt a freestyle run filled with big air, nonstop action, and flow like this expert run by Colvinard in the Black Pearl. Of course, momentum. And a perfect example of that is this incredible slap wheelie by Jimmy Creighton in Bounty Hunter. And ultimately those special wow moments like this crazy two wheel save from Lucas Oil Crusader. All drivers pushing their Monster Jam trucks to its absolute limits. Each driver is awarded a score by you the audience. That's right, fans in attendance at our Monster Jam events provide each driver a score immediately following their run. Fans judge our drivers based on the use of all track obstacles, creativity, and technical moves like this bicycle into a stoppy into a moonwalk by Son of a Digger. Drivers will also use combinations like Bakugan showing off this backflip to moonwalk combo, and of course, the granddaddy of them all, the wow factor. However, to qualify for a score, and this is new in 2020, drivers must complete the first 30 seconds of their run, and that has been a huge difference in crowning our overall event champions. And we start things off with the master of the walk, the plank backflip, Kovinard in the black pearl bar, wasting no time getting off that step up ramp. Yeah, anytime Kovinard hits the track, you know he's gonna announce his presence. He did that right off the bat, and he's got it rolling. He's got a big job though, to set the tone for freestyle and really give his competitors a run for their money. There were some fans on social media, Bari, that have said Colvinard has ultimately kind of moved himself into a one-move wonder with that walk the plank. He attempts it. If he hits it, he wins. If he doesn't, he loses. I don't see it that way at all. He doesn't rely on the backflip to win the freestyle. He uses the clock. He hits the jumps. He gets the big air, and then he gets you that wow factor. Yeah, the wow factor is something that is really special when it comes to freestyle because you have to be able to grasp the fans to get those big scores, to get those big numbers. Members, they vote, so you kind of got a, a personal connection with them to see how they liked your freestyle. Some great air, the sky wheelie for the Black Pearl, now spinning it back around, coming back to the other side of the track. Talk about the track elements, Bari, as we've now seen two competitions with the sky wheelie on the other side of the step up ramp with this track and the dirt starting to get torn apart. And speaking of tearing apart, you know, attrition starts to take its toll. This is show two of two here in San Antonio. So you got to think that 
all these shows, all these jumps take its toll on the actual drivers and the trucks themselves. Another big jump for Colvin Arden. The Black Pearl up over the jammer. Gets some air. Brings it back down. Turning the truck back around. Coming this way again. A lot of obstacles for Colvin Arden to hit. Going up now over the crush cars. And some big air for the Black Pearl. Try to get a slap wheelie. Not much there for him. And here he goes, Bari. Lining it up for walk the plank. It is Colvin Arden time. He hits the throttle and up he goes. And can't walk the plank but lands the backflip nonetheless. Yeah, it's a really a split second decision you have to make to grab that reverse gear trying for the wow factor look Whoa. at the sky wheelie the big air the momentum drops it back down what a way to finish the freestyle run as we take a look at the original super glue glued to the action replay what a run for colvin Arden, the black pearl yes 8.962 that's a big number first out of the gate so he set the bar really high i'm looking forward to great freestyle competition after that run I even thought that score was very, very low for what he gave the fans. Brad Allen in Monster Mutt Rottweiler, a tough act to follow with the Black Pearl cross-threading over the crush cars as we kick things off for Monster Mutt Rottweiler. So Brad Allen has really got to elevate his game. After Colvinar threw down that great opening run, he's got to, you know, match that and do even more. So let's see what Brad Allen's got. And that is the score to beat, 8.962 from the Black Pearl. We see a lot of these freestyle runs with the bigger names like Grave Digger, Monster Energy get into the nine point something. So it is a beatable score, but a great run nonetheless as Monster Mutt Rottweiler with Brad Allen behind the wheel trying to make something happening. Uh -oh. Extended a little bit. What happened? Looked like he was going right into the containers. Yeah, it looked like his rear steer did not turn right there. So it kind of surprised him. He was expecting the truck to rotate, and it did not, so he had to back up. Makes a nice adjustment for Brad Allen in Monster Mutt Rottweiler again, hitting the jammer. Seems to like that jump early on in his freestyle run. There's some big air for Monster Mutt Rottweiler, the proud member of Team Scream, racing a teammate of Jim Kohler in Avenger. Brad Allen is a guy we've talked about a lot on this show, a guy that can just run you up and down, looking for a big freestyle win here tonight, and up over the step up ramp he goes. Oh. Hard landing though, I, yeah, see, it, it, he popped a tire on that landing. That was an abrupt hit. That's gonna put it premature into his run. And we take a look at the overall BKT top five leaderboard. Todd LaDuke again is positioned for another event championship. He needs a strong finish in freestyle, but Bryce Kenny and Great Clips Mohawk Warrior is right there on his tail. And it's been an incredible night so far, and we are not done yet. We continue freestyle with the two-time world finals champion Jim Kohler in Avenger. I love the look of Jim Kohler's Avenger. I mean, it's just built like a tank. It's built wide, it's built low, it's got a great stance to it. Great for freestyle. Jim Kohler in Avenger went to the top of the mountain in freestyle in 2003 and again in 2011. Joining some incredible names in the Monster Jam history books as a two-time World Finals freestyle champion. Started the year off in a big way in Anaheim with an overall event championship win. Looking for another one tonight as he continues to try to climb over these jumps left and right. Landed a little crazy on that one. Got to clip that back tire. Yeah, Jim has probably got the adrenaline pumping. Great shot of the dirt flying off of that jump. Oh, and it takes a, some guts to be able to tackle the step up off kilter like that, but he gathered it back up. You know, Jim Kohler is such a fan favorite. He did not get that Mr. Excitement nickname for nothing, Scott. You said it takes guts to hit the step up ramp uh, sideways like that off kilter. If anybody has more guts than Jim Kohler, I'd like to know who they are. He's proven <laughs> that time and time again. Yeah, for sure. He's not the two-time World Finals champion for nothing. And he's out here in San Antonio wowing these fans, you know, putting Avenger in the air. And the truck is taking it. Look how well it's landing. He competed at the Monster Jam All-Star Challenge. What a save for Jim Kohler in Avenger. And came out that weekend in Las Vegas and did that one jump and made everybody put that video on social media, on YouTube. It went viral. And Jim Kohler now refires and is back in this freestyle run with a big jump and big air for Avenger. That's a great way. Oh, as he continues another two-wheel side, sideways save there. Uh, it's a great way to, you know, announce your presence after getting shut off like that. I'm not sure what the tech officials saw, but it looks like Avenger is 110%. He's ready to rock.
Up off the jammer ramp goes Avenger. Jim Kohler, one of the most seasoned drivers in all of Monster Jam, competed in every Monster Jam World Finals, and he looks like he is going to take the chance for the Monster Energy backflip oh. ramp. Here goes Avenger up the side of the ramp, lands it perfectly. A textbook backflip for Mr. Excitement. Excellent. I wasn't sure if he was second-guessing himself there right at the beginning, but he pulled it off. Now the adrenaline is really going for Jim Kohler. He is putting together quite the run. Will it be enough to overtake the top spot? And Cole Bernard and the Black Pearl, the fans on their feet. And look at that as we take a look at the original super glue glued to the action replay. Bari, our new leader, is Jim Kohler in Avenger. Yes, it was glued to the track there. So, man, kudos to Jim Kohler for rocking the house. Let's see if anybody can top him, though. Now when you're Lindsey Wink and Lucas Oil Crusader, as a driver, put us inside the driver's seat, put us into his mind. What does he have to do now watching Jim Kohler go out, do an incredible run, rise to the top of the leaderboard? How do you stay calm and collected and rise to the top of that BKT leaderboard if you're Lindsey Wink? Well, Scott, if there's anybody in Monster Jam that can take you to school at how to freestyle a Monster Jam truck, it is this guy. Lindsey Wink is a consummate veteran. He's been at this a long time. He knows he's keeping his composure right off the bat to get through that 30 seconds, but there's no doubt that Lindsey Wink is going to turn up the wick here on the Crusader. Whipping it back around. Here comes Lucas Oil Crusader up over the ramp. He goes. Great job. Lands it on the left side. A little rough. Gets it back now on all four BKT tires. He's coming back for more to the other side as these competitors just watch and wait their turn. Jim Kohler and Avenger, your current leader with Lindsey Wink now up the other side of that incredible step up ramp. Didn't get a whole lot of air though. Yeah, it looks like he just did that effortlessly. I mean, the truck landed great. He's really just building towards the end. Uh, he's, he's that driver that likes the crescendo right at the end. As you see, he's got a great save there. That'll get the adrenaline pumping. He's got the fans buzzing. So I think Lindsey Wink is going to turn it up from here on. He ran out of room as we see the other Monster Jam trucks lined up, so he, he couldn't add on to that momentum. You mentioned Whoa. that. There's a great move as he gets the big sky wheelie sideways across and saves it back down on the track. What a move. Yes, sir. I can't help to think I thought the rear steer might have suffered some damage. He goes into a veteran move. If you're thinking the rear steer might have an issue, a great donut, which ends in a cyclone. Oh, he's over. I still try to save it. Look at the effort, <laughs> that last second effort from Lindsey Wink and Lucas Oil Crusader. Never giving up. Didn't quite get enough. He moves up into second. But our leader remaining, Jim Kohler in Avenger. And here comes a man out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. This is Steve Sims in Stone Crusher. I love the look of Stone Crusher, too. It's such a great design. You know, the, the wrap on this truck tells a story. He's out there, you know, emulating his family business. You know, he's in the granite and stone business, so it's awesome piece to, to showcase that. Funny that you mentioned that. He traded new countertops with Dennis Anderson for an appearance by Dennis Anderson and Gravedigger for his son's birthday party. Dennis let him know that a Monster Jam truck was available for purchase. Steve Sims bought it, and the rest is history. He now has two trucks, Stone Crusher and Hooked, competing on Monster Jam events every single year. So Steve Sims, that, that fan story, he was a fan, met Dennis Anderson, changed his life, and Steve will tell you that was one of the best things he ever did was inviting Dennis Anderson to his a son's birthday party. That is a cool story. I think he's about to send Stone Crusher off the center jump. Oh, no, he faked me out there. But I think he's got a good run going. He's just lacking that little wow factor that's going to bring the fans to their feet. Now moving it into a donut. Another great story for Steve Sims. That, that young man who Dennis Anderson went to his birthday party, Steven, is now also a Monster Jam driver in his own right. So it runs in the family as we see Stone Crusher trying to get over these obstacles on this beat-up track here at the Alamo Dome. Yeah, let's see if he goes for this transfer jump. This is becoming one of the bigger jumps out here on this track in San Antonio. See how much elevation he gets there? Gets the elevation, oh. and look at the second effort there. Pops it up into a uh -oh. slap wheelie and lands it, but look at Ouch. the damage to Stone Crusher. Yeah, it looks like he pulled the limit straps out, which caused the sway bars to disconnect from that rear end housing. Let's take a look at the BKT Freestyle Top 5. Avenger, your leader, Lucas Oil Crusader, didn't quite have enough and Black Pearl sitting in third. We've seen some incredible action here on Stadium Championship Series Red, but these superstars aren't the only ones keeping fans on the edge of their seats. Let's take a look now at the Monster Energy Action of the Week. 
Jabari, we go to Stadium Championship Series Green in Tampa. Neil Elliott wow. and Max D with this dynamic save. <laughs> that was incredible. I don't know. That's kind of uncharacteristic of Neil to go through a turn like that. But this Max D truck is unique. It doesn't have sway bars on it, so it twisted up really easily. He would go on to lose that race to his wife, Candace Jolly, and Monster Mutt Dalmatia. But Neil Elliott and Max D with the Monster Energy Action of the Week. Todd LaDuke right here. Bari has a chance to put this one away with a top freestyle run. Yeah, and if anybody can rise to the occasion, it is Todd LaDuke. Monster Energy is backing him, and it's for good reason. Todd is a consummate professional, and he's going to bring it up. I don't know if that was you jinxing him, but Todd LaDuke <laughs> is now at a complete standstill. This could be disastrous oh, no. for the two-time World Finals champion. And you see he's in communication with his crew chief, Dakota, and there he's shaking his head, and, and he's not really sure what's wrong either. Todd LaDuke trying to refire, throwing his hands up in the air. This could end, and it does end badly for Todd LaDuke. He is now disqualified, does not complete 30 seconds of his run. What could have happened on the landing of that jump? Well, as you can see, the, the amber light is flashing, so something with the remote ignition interrupter caused that truck to shut down. Tyler Duke obviously disappointed with his performance, but he is not alone tonight. Here are a few other drivers whose performance bar was not up to par. Darren Basil behind the wheel of Black Stallion. These are two veterans, a veteran name in Monster Jam and Darren Basil being a, a longtime driver. Oh, he just hits that jammer in, in the wrong angle, standing straight up, not enough. And here's Brian Wright and Hooked. Man, every time we've seen Hooked tonight, it's missing more body panels. So I'm not sure what's going on in their camp. Brian Wright is always one to bring it, though. Good look at the inner workings of a Monster Jam truck for everybody. Didn't work out in Brian Wright's favor tonight. That got a great landing on that jump, but that's about all he was able to muster in his freestyle run. Becky McDonough and El Toro Loco has won a lot of freestyle events in her career tonight, just not her night at the Alamo Dome. Yeah, Becky the wild card. I always call her that because you never know what she's going to do. She's out to win every time she hits the track, and she's got to bring it 110%. Oh, oh, that, that's not going to get it done, though. She broke a four-link bar, uh, tore up a lot of parts there, and it's going to end her night early. Mike Vodders, the second, who earlier took the Great Clip Skills Challenge win, was not able to parlay that success into his freestyle win as he also suffered a lot of truck breakage early in his freestyle run, so a tough break for the 2015 World Finals freestyle champion. And now we move on to John Zimmer and Dragon getting the fans up on their feet. I love that. It's very intimidating with the fire-breathing Dragon coming out on the track. Yeah, I get asked a lot if I wasn't driving the Zombie Monster Jam truck, which truck would I want to pilot? The answer is easy. This one right here. Dragon is probably one of my favorite trucks. You know, you get to hit a button inside the cab and it breathes fire. I don't know what more you could want out of a Monster Jam truck than that. Six stadium freestyle wins in the career for John Zimmer and Dragon trying tonight for number seven. The, the famed Gravedigger driver was behind the wheel of Gravedigger from 2012 to 2017 before switching over into Dragon. We've talked a lot about the, the lineage and the heritage that comes with driving Gravedigger. John Zimmer doesn't have that, that paint scheme anymore. It doesn't have the popularity, but it's still the same guy behind the wheel. Yeah, and he's been in a little bit of a slump in 2020, so I'm really looking for a breakout performance from John tonight in San Antonio. Great air off of that jump. And look oh. at the save attempt for John Zimmer getting the front tire, and he yeah. nails it, Barry. That was a last-ditch effort. He pulled off the one-wheel save. I guarantee you the fans are buzzing from that, and he needs to go from right to that and just continue the momentum on, and he's got himself. he got something to work with here. All right, we know it takes a lot of skill to drive a Monster Jam truck, but educate the fans on how reactionary it really is being behind the wheel. Sure, you can't even think about you know saving a truck in that instant. It's got to be something that is second nature. You have to be able to just you know coach your mind into doing exactly what you need your body to do, whether it's grab the shifter, whether it's steer the truck a certain way, put it in reverse. It all has to come together seamlessly to be able to you know complete a freestyle at the top of your game. There's the veteran move, the donut in the center of the track, then gets a big jump off the step-up ramp. Now the Dragon going for the Monster oh. Energy backflip ramp. He gets up a little slow, lands it on the front left, hits the container with the back wheel, but he is still going. A successful backflip attempt, and here comes the step-up ramp. John Zimmer and Dragon awesome. with a huge sky wheelie, lands it down perfectly onto the track. 
Yeah, he was up so high, he tacked the brakes just to set the truck's nose back down, and I think he was further back down than he thought he was. So, excellent run by John. As you see, he takes the lead, 9.571. That is going to be a tough score to beat your new leader, John Zimmer and Dragon, as we take a look at the BKT Freestyle Top 5. Taking now over the top spot from Jim Kohler and Avenger and dropping Lucas Oil Crusader to that third spot. Final two competitors here at the Alamo Dome in San Antonio for the Stadium Championship Series Red event. After barely missing out on winning the overall event championship, Bryce Kenny has one more chance here in San Antonio to prove he is the man to beat. Or will the black and green wrecking machine be able to make the comeback of the weekend happen? With Todd the Duke and Monster Energy getting disqualified during his run, the door is wide open, Bari, for these two veterans to take the win. For sure, you know, and it's anybody's game right there. That top two, Tyler Duke left the door wide open, as you stated. So it's really going to be interesting to see if, you know, great clips Mohawk warrior Bryce Kenny can seal the deal this time out. And Bryce Kenny was just one point away from the overall event championship last episode here at the Alamo Dome. So a chance for redemption for Bryce Kenny now as he gets Great Clips Mohawk Warrior on the track for this two minute freestyle run. And I've gone on record as saying in most other sports, Barry, two minutes isn't gonna do anything for you. But in Monster Jam, two minutes can win you a championship. Yes, and it feels like an eternity out there. Two minutes, you know, you wanna get in so much of your run done and in fact, sometimes you feel like, man, that two minutes went by really fast. You didn't get to do all you wanted. But one thing's for sure, somebody who's up to that challenge, Bryce Kinney and the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. It's been a great run for Bryce Kinney in San Antonio, winning his first stadium racing win in our last episode and just missing that overall event championship by one point. I know that's crushing as he continues to look for this championship in 2020. So Bryce Kenny, Great Clips Mohawk Warrior now just getting everything up and over each and every obstacle on this Alamo Dome track. And it has been beat up. We've been talking about this all night long. But now when you're at the back end of freestyle, you have even more elements to worry about as he hits the side of the step-up ramp. And it looked like the, that was a little rough landing there on that sand. If you notice, here in San Antonio, they have sand right there to try and cushion that landing and also for good donut area. 2019, Bryce Kenny won Stadium Save of the Year for his save in Houston, Texas, as he gets a great sidewall save there in Great Clips Mohawk Warrior. But he's got a lot of work to do if he wants to beat John Zimmer in Dragon. He talks about the wow moment. That is one thing he has always prided himself on is the wow moment, that wow factor. He has yet to do anything close to that right now, but still some time on the clock as he starts slowing down. What is going on with the Great Clips Mohawk Warrior? Let's see. Oh. The eight pack straight up in the air. Does he have enough? Bounces it and lands it. That's why he's slowing down. There is your wow factor for Bryce Kenny. That was pretty crafty, Scott. He snuck that in there. I didn't even realize the eight pack backflip was right there on the track. Great job, Bryce. He's put himself in a great position for the overall event championship, but he has to hold off this man. The five time world finals champion, Adam Anderson in Gravedigger, still has a chance to win the event championship, but he needs to do something very special tonight in his freestyle run. And already I can tell from Adam's throttle rhythm that he is attacking this track. He keeps up more momentum than anybody out here. Look at the roost. You know, he's drifting that 12,000 pound Monster Jam truck around like it's nobody's business. And he's rocking the house already. He's like throwing caution to the wind. What 30 seconds? When I see Adam Anderson make some of these jumps and whip this Monster Jam truck around, it reminds me of what you see in Supercross. He just, it's so effortless. And there's another one, a sky wheelie down across the backside of the step up ramp. But it's just so effortless with him. He makes that truck look like it weighs about 15 pounds. <laughs> yeah, and this huge transfer jump. And he hit that with a lot more throttle left to give. So Gravedigger looks like it's working great. Adam is on a tear. He's got something to prove here in San Antonio. And like you say, redemption is on his mind, and he's rocking it, man. Finished third in freestyle in the last episode here at the Ooh. Alamo Dome. Lands it sideways, and look at that tire. Oh, great combo, but he has canned that rim and beadlock combination. I hope the BKT tire doesn't lose air, and he can continue on for all these great fans here. 
If anybody can do it, it is Adam Anderson in Grave Digger. He can do more on three tires than most people can do on four. But as you said, it's all up to that BKT tire. Can it hang on? He knows he's got limited time. So now he's going to line up here for the Monster Energy backflip with three good wheels. And still on that front tire bar, he bounces it and saves it. What a move. Awesome. And sometimes, uh, you know, a backflip like that that doesn't necessarily work out the way you want it. Sometimes the fans love that even more. Oh, huge air right there. And the sky wheelie, the big air getting that grill right off the front of Grave Digger. Now he's just beating it into the ground. And here we go with the donut. Can he get it up on two wheels for the Cyclone? Oh yeah, he's got it. And he kicked up that dust. Great way to end that freestyle run. Look at the fans. And look at the score, Bari 9.524 as we look at the original super glue glue to the action replay. There is the save off the backflip ramp. He finishes in second in freestyle by five one hundredths of a point. However, he did finish in second, so that might be enough to get him the overall event championship right now. It's all about John Zimmer and Dragon with the big freestyle win. Yeah, it's good to see John Zimmer get that monkey off his back. He's been in a slump during this 2020 season. It's great to see him in the winner's circle in freestyle. Let's join Taylor Mock and our freestyle winner, John Zimmer in Dragon. Congratulations, John Zimmer, freestyle champion here in San Antonio. What a kickoff for you in 2020. Yeah, not really. Honestly, we really stumbled yesterday. We stumbled in Anaheim. We stumbled the first day back to San Antonio, and it really bothered me. I've been to San Antonio a lot. I've won here a lot, and it's because of these fans that I've won here. They drive us to drive that truck in the ground. Earlier, a buddy of mine that came to the show, Mike Morello, said, it happens to all of us. Everybody have rough years. Get out there and do your thing. By God, buddy, we did it. And one more time, we got to give a big congratulations to John Zimmer, driver of Dragon, your freestyle champion. Dragon takes freestyle, but in the overall event championship race, it is Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior and Grave Digger tying with 32 points. So we go to freestyle for the tiebreaker, and Adam Anderson's second place freestyle finish gives him the championship over Bryce Kenny and Grey Clips Mohawk Warrior. And again, the frustration for Bryce Kenny once again so close, yet so far away, doesn't get the championship. Let's go down to Laura Callis with our event championship, the redemption of Adam Anderson and Grave Digger. Event championship winner tonight. How are you going to celebrate this win, Adam? You know, honestly, this trophy's not for me. That's dedicated to these boys right here. We had a rough night last night, but they knows what it takes to come out here. They're not only doing it for myself, for the team, they're doing it for each and every one of you guys to come out here and put on a show. Win or lose, the trophy, whatever it takes. These guys rock it out behind the scenes to get Grave Digger out there to dig some graves. That's going to do it for us here in San Antonio, Texas. Grave Digger, Monster Energy, Red Clips, Mohawk, Warrior all battled it out tonight. But it was Adam Anderson who takes the overall event win. For Barry Moose Sauer, Taylor Mock, and Laura Callis, I'm Scott Jordan. Thank you for watching Monster Jam.